years ago, I uh, we were in the middle of lockdown, as you remember, and I decided to start buying wine online. So I approached one of those online wine retailers and started getting cases of wine shipped to me. Uh, along the way, obviously in July 2020, they offered me a, an inducement for free shipping. Well, it wasn't free, it was a pound, but any number of cases for the next year I could have for a pound. So I undertook and I subscribed to that. And I thought at the time this was for one year only. Now, I've just looked at my bank statement and for July 26th, 2022, they have extracted from my account. And I assume that I've got this arrangement on a debit card with this particular company and they've extracted 25 quid for my next year's free shipping. Now, I haven't shipped any wine from this particular company for ages now. So I think what they did in July 2020, they charged me a quid. I got that whole year's shipping and that was all good. In July 2021, I suspect they charged me 25 quid for, for the following 12 months. And they've done the same again this year. Now, I haven't had wine for, well, since before July 2021, because I stopped using that particular company. So this is just a, a legacy yep. agreement that I have unwittingly agreed to. Yep. So I'm going to phone this company up tomorrow and say, well, I want the money back from the July 2022 situation. I'm just wondering what what my legal position is regarding okay. this. Okay, so, so the starting point is you've got to find out what you agree to. If you agree to an offer that was uh, £1 for the first year, renewing annually at £25, uh, and then you didn't cancel it, you're stuck, I'm afraid. Uh, whether or not you actually use the service, you've agreed to pay £25 to have the right to have shipping every year. And I'm sure you're very familiar with subscription services and how they work. It's, it's just how they work. Uh, if, however, the, the deal they offered at the time simply said it's a pound, then they can't up the price to £25, not at least without giving you express notice, uh, without emailing you or writing to you and telling you they're doing that. Now, I'm, and I'm assuming they didn't do that, Paul. I, I can't recall seeing any you can't. email. Well, from look, them. they'll tell you if they did. They'll know yeah, if they exactly, did. Yeah. Um, if, if they did. If the contract that you ticked a box saying, I agree to these terms and conditions, said £1 for the first year, £25 a year subsequently until pull cancels, they're your bang to rights, I'm afraid. Uh, although many companies will agree to waive. A charge, an auto renewal charge, if you contact them within a certain period, sometimes a week, sometimes a month of an auto renewal. But they're doing that for goodwill, not because they're legally obliged to. Uh, if the contract simply said a pound and made no mention of increasing to twenty-five pounds, and they've never written to you and said uh, we're increasing to twenty-five pounds, they've just sneaked it out of your bank account, then you would be entitled to that money back, and you could sue them in the small claims court for it. Okay. OK. OK, so I need to determine exactly what I agree. You to, need to find what you uh, agree to. And, and you're not going to have a record of it, I suspect, Paul, which means you're going to have to rely on them to give you a copy. If they can't give exactly. you a copy, if they can't give you a copy, if they say we've got no record of what the website said two years ago, then they're stuck and you'll win a claim in the, in the courts because they won't oh, be able okay. to prove you agree to an ongoing contract. <laughs> 